Hey folks, I'm out and about today. It's a beautiful day, beautiful day. Couldn't pick a better day to do some hiking. So I'm gonna hike down this abandoned road. I got a little history on this road last night. I ran into a couple of local fellas that um, put me on to a little bit of history on the road and I'll talk about that while I'm hiking but I'm going to film my entire hike but I'll be whittling out pieces to make a video of this exploration I've never been down in here um, from what I understand it's very very rare that anybody ever strikes out down this road to explore it's closed off, it's all grown in, so I haven't got a clue what I'm gonna run into. So, it's just an old road. And I, one of the fellows I talked to said, why would you wanna walk down there? You know, that's, you know, it's not a very exciting trip to walk off just into the woods like that. And I said, oh, you got it all wrong. I said, there may be nothing on this whole road to most people, but to me, it's everything. It's outdoors, it's just taking it all in. So, could, like I said, couldn't pick a better day. Skies are blue, occasional little puffy clouds, nice stiff breeze, but I probably won't feel much of it back in there in the thick of the woods, but it's only 65 degrees. Perfect, perfect hiking weather. So, without further ado, let's get on the trail. Oh, the here we are. We're going to head down this abandoned road. Road number 281. The sign says, foot travel welcome, closed to all public motor vehicle use. It's got a big steel gate in here where the entrance to the road used to be. And... I can barely tell the road heads off in that direction. And you'll see what I mean by barely tell as we walk back in here. So here we go. Let's do a little exploring down this road. Now you can probably tell there's a trail through here, you know, but you can see the width of the road. You can see the width of the original road. Like I said earlier, I haven't a clue what we're going to run into. We're just going to walk this and take it in as it comes along. Now when you look at this, you can see all the down timber in here. This road, from what I understand, was abandoned and closed in the early 1960s, which would mean we're looking at this road being closed over 50 years. I do see where there are some footprints where folks have hiked through. They're older footprints, but there have been people through here. Pretty rugged in here, actually. This, the roadbed is virtually gone, virtually gone. There's big rocks sticking out. It's very obvious that there is an intended trail in here, but it's 
pretty well grown in and it goes on and off of the road bed see now I'm on the road bed right now and right here rocks sticking out all over the place when this road was open something tells me it was it was a pretty rough road all this old timber down Beautiful in here though. And like I said, it's perfect day. Getting around and over some of the dead falls. The really nice thing about this is just how thick this forest actually is. Yeah, we'll cut through here. A lot of saplings growing in around the trail. It's amazing how you can actually see the original roadbed in here. lot of spots it's not easy to make it out but now the two fellas I talked to about this road they're older fellas the one fellow was in his 60s around my age the other fellow was in his late 70s. Now the older fella, the best he could remember, he said that he's pretty sure this road comes out at this little lake down here. That it comes real close to that little lake. Now one thing is, is that I decided that I'm going to allow myself two hours in and then two hours out. So not knowing what's back here, I'm going to um, just assume that when I hit the two hour mark which okay it's 11 o'clock in the morning so at one o'clock i'll consider turning around if i run into something interesting i want to stop take a good break long break i'll allow myself two and a half three hours maximum because three hours in would put it two o'clock Turn around, put me back out at five. So, this is interesting. You'll see this. That's glacial rock. And there's another one right up here. Get over this deadfall. There we go. There's another one right, right in there. Now that glacial rock was deposited as the glaciers that receded from this area. And you'll run into big boulders just sitting in the woods. No other rocks around but a big old boulder dropped here by the glaciers. And gosh knows how far those glaciers carried that boulder before they dropped them off. Now this is interesting. I love this. Beautiful. You see all this down timber in here? All that down timber all beautifully moss covered you can see the old road bed here there's a big big old pile of deadfall in there that I'm gonna have to work my way around otherwise I'd have to get on my hands and knees climb underneath all that 
Whoop. Check my camera. One thing with camera on the hat is you don't know if you're going to clear something when you're going underneath it until you until your hat bumps. Now this is beautiful hiking in here, but one of the issues is the moss. You have to be careful that you don't get yourself with a bad footing and end up slipping on some of this moss. So you know there's a spring in here, you can see. It's a spring. The, um, looking real close, I can just see the water flowing. So there's a spring underneath here somewhere. This w would have been a kind of a bad spot in the road because of the spring. Now I'm trying to work my way around this. All these deadfalls. Let's get around this spring without stepping in the wrong spot and sinking up to my ankles in muck. There we go. Up and around. Now that old boy saying that this road was abandoned in the 60s Just looking at like a lot of this dead down timber oh it's been there for 30 40 years at least minimum 60 years 50 or 60 years I can believe it you can see how mother nature is reclaiming this abandoned road. Now, that old fella told me that the purpose for this road in its heyday was to be a fire access in case of a fire and it would bring you to the east side. Oh, I, I, I beg my pardon. It would bring you to the west side of Black Lake. And he said they abandoned better than half of the road soon after it was built. And then the road only accessed this little lake down here that doesn't even have a name. It was never named. I asked him if he was aware of it ever having a name. And he said no, no. He said it was one of those few unnamed lakes. I asked him if there was fish in the lake. He said he doesn't have a clue. He said, not that he's ever heard of, but then again, he said, not that he's ever heard of anybody ever fishing it. Whoop. He said, uh, other than by foot, the lake is inaccessible. So, he said, of course, it would not get much in the way of fishing activity. Oh, well, here's an interesting spot to cross. I'm going to have to go under this tree and under the next one. Now, this is pretty cool. These two trees have dropped over that 
big glacial boulder there onto the roadbed. Very interesting. Take this branch down. Make it, oh, make it easier to get under here. There we go. Find a accessible route back to the roadbed. I think I'm gonna go this way. Now looking at these trees that are down over the road, <coughs> I noticed that many of them had been uprooted. I mean, this one right here, it was uprooted at one time, many, many years ago. And this one over here was uprooted. So, they're all uprooted and they're all laying facing east, which means many, many years ago, a very, very strong storm came through and lot, knocked a lot of timber down in here. The storm came out of the west and knocked everything down to the east. There's a great big old pine back in there that's knocked down. It's quite large. Quite large. Now this looks like it opens up up here. Just a small little opening. You can see old higher tread marks here. Can't see the actual tread. You can see the tire track. Um, nothing has driven on this in years and years. But it was real evident this was a wet spot in here. <coughs> Another big glacial boulder there. There's, I notice there's several in this area. You get a crew in here with some saws, and it wouldn't take it wouldn't take terrible amount of effort for a crew of say four or six people to come in here and actually blaze the trail through here and make this, you know, they don't have to cut much, you just have to cut out maybe like a three foot section out of each of these deadfalls just so that you can walk a straight line through and then trim out some of the little saplings on the trail. It's hard to believe how nature can, can so easily reclaim something like this road. Oh, deer droppings. Oh uh, yeah, I bet you the deer love this. It's a great, great deer habitat in here. Boy, that's a big blowdown area in there. Looks pretty thick. We'll see what we can do. Actually, looking at this, I'd be better off cutting up through the woods here and going around the ends of it because it looks like it goes up there about, oh, 50 feet or more. I see one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, seven major, eight major um, blowdowns across the road bed. So I think I'm gonna go up and around them. There's something very unusual. I'll show you over here. All right, see this tree here? This down tree? This tree is not dead. It's down, but it's not dead. It's hung up over here. The top's all dead in it, but not all of it. Look at this vertical. It came out here. Must have broke that branch when it fell. Must have broke that branch and it turned and grew vertical. Just above it is another lateral branch. Just kept growing, went vertical. So you got two trees going off of this deadfall, growing straight up. It's pretty awesome. It's a maple, by the way. Um, but there you go. Another one of those amazing little tricks of nature that you don't really expect. Now I'm hopeful I won't have any trouble relocating the roadbed when I hike back to the when I turn and hike to the east. See now many hikers would have abandoned their attempts at this point because they wouldn't have an idea of where things are going, but a little bit of effort, and there we are. We just went around all those deadfalls down there, all those deadfalls that are down there. Went around all that. And here's the roadbed. I can just make it out again. Now, as I go, and I ha haven't said anything about it, but as I go, I take notice of certain landmarks, like this, now this big rock here, this big rock here, with that, it's got a little birch growing right out the top of it. I'll remember that. It's got that broke down tree and that birch, and Right over here is another large boulder. That's either side of the road. That means the road's going that way. So on my way back out, I'll watch for those markers. Now I can still make out the road pretty good up ahead of me. So, so this is, it's going good. It's going good. This is, you know, one thing, the pine dropped over the trail. Easier to walk around than to walk over. The, um, that's... Oh, I don't know where I was going. <laughs> well, that's one thing about this hike. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just following this old abandoned road. This would have been probably a pretty interesting drive back in here back in the day. Oh wow. I don't know if you can make it out or not. That's a pond. There's a pond down in here. Nice pond. I remember that. Come across that pond, make sure it's to my left the way up.
See, now I wonder, looking at all the, all this down timber across the road, did they abandon the road after the storm? Or did they abandon the road before the storm? I wish I knew the history because maybe the storm was the reasoning in abandoning the road. It could be. Now this is kind of unique. It's got a great big flat rock there. Standing vertical. Very unusual. Very unusual. This is one of those where I'm gonna to have to sit on wet moss to get over that log. So I'm gonna cut around it. There we are, I can see the roadbed again. There's just enough of the roadbed still existing that a person, if you're staying sharp, keeping out your eyes open, there's no reason you should get lost back in here. So with that, I'm gonna change out batteries on the camera and then I'll head back down the trail. Okay, fresh batteries. We'll keep moseying on. can really hear the wind up in the tops of the trees. It's blowing hard today, but down here you hardly feel it. It's just a light, light breeze. Um, and I actually wind. I wish the wind was blowing harder down here. It would keep the skeeters away. Because if I stop, those skeeters just go crazy on me. Yeah just not enough breeze to keep them away from you, you know. It is getting so thick in there, I don't know what I'm going to run into, but I'm going to try to go through this, see if I can define the road on the other side, and hopefully take it from there and get a little further back. The little lake I was talking about shouldn't be too terribly far from this point. I see there's a ravine off to my right. There's a ravine back in here. Some sunlight poking through over there on the hillside on the ravine. That may lead down to the lake. I think the road is actually to my left. I'm running into piles of big rock here which would typically mean that's not road. And the road sure wouldn't run down through the ravine. Boy, there's a huge stump there that that had to have been an ancient tree. For this neck of the woods, that's one of the originals. That's um, probably a white pine. Oh yeah, I got through here. Big pile of rock here off to the right, but off to the left is the road bed. You can see it. So, as long as I got road bed that I can identify, we're gonna keep moving. Nice pretty mushroom. I hiked with somebody once. I pointed out a couple of really nice mushrooms. Said, look at that pretty mushroom. And he stopped on it. I thought, you bummer. I told him, you know, that's foolishness stomping on that. There's no reason to do that. He goes, ah, it'll grow back. I said, not really. And it doesn't, it shouldn't have to. And we came across another one and he pointed it out. He goes, well, look at that big bugger there. They walked over and stomped on it. 
Well, guess what? I don't hike with that guy anymore. Oh boy, we got a big, we got a big downfall here, and that bugger is pointing west. See, now this is not typical of the rest of the trees. All of the rest of the trees fell to the east. This bugger fell to the west, right across the road bed. And it looks like a bummer to run. Oh yeah, that's a bummer to try to get through that garbage. I'm gonna have to go around this guy. Now, when you hike a remote area like this, you know, I'm gonna be, I would say by now I've hiked, oh, only about a mile and a half. I'm real lucky, two miles. Into the woods. From my truck. Now, you use extra caution when you're hiking this kind of stuff. Because if you were to have an accident, any kind of incident where you could possibly get injured, you want to be extra cautious. Watch your steps. Don't be in too big of a hurry because you aren't hiking a trail. You're bushwhacking. So there's a lot of things that can take, take away from your attention. Because if you were to hurt yourself out here, can you imagine crawling through this garbage that I just hiked through? Oh my gosh, that's a long ways to crawl. Okay, we're back on the original roadbed. Oh, I worked up a little bit of shortness of breath going through that stuff, but all's good, all's good. Oh, see now this gets real interesting up here. Nice trail. And then it looks like I got about a hundred feet of pines, of young pines. That's going to be a that's going to be a bummer going through there. But there really isn't a choice if I want to stay with the roadbed. So it's break trail, and here we go. We're going to break trail. But like I was saying. See, and that's something you learn too when you're out here. Um, these hiking poles. You take those hiking poles, put them out in front of you like this. Sometimes just square like that, sometimes at a V. And you walk through this stuff and it pushes all the brush down and away from you. See, it opens it right up so you can walk through it without getting smacked in the face. You hold them just high enough that you're protecting your face and you're not getting whipped with this stuff. See? It makes it a lot easier to walk through. Oh, it opens up up here. Oh, switch over so I don't have to go under that tree. I've got an odd maple growing here. I believe. Oh no, it's a stinking elm. No, it's not. It's silver. It's a silver birch. So, yeah, a little bit of effort, a little slap here and there from a stick, but going through all that thick, hundred feet of thick pine brush didn't go so bad. Trail's pretty good again. We got a big old sunspot coming through here. Kind of neat. I sure hope that this GoPro is doing me right. Oh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Well, let's try to figure out where the camera's pointing, but right at the end of my hiking stick there, there's a deer track. 
and there's a much larger deer track right there. That's Mama and this year's fawn. Tramp, trampsing down this trail. And they look like they're today's tracks. Probably this morning. Probably from this morning. Right now, this time of day, they are bedding up somewhere. Yeah, the road is getting, the road bed's getting a little more difficult to identify. Seems like it disappears and then comes back. And oh yeah, it's getting really tough in here. I can kind of tell still where the original road bed is. At this point, I'm at that point where I wish I would have brought some surveyor's tape, really do. Because I could have blazed a couple of spots where the when the road disappears. I don't like blazing trees. Okay. Now the roadbed has literally has literally disappeared. However, I think I'm gonna continue on down through there. At least for a way. Okay, now it's definite. The road bed has deteriorated to the point where I can no longer identify it. There's a meadow up here on the left I'm gonna look at. Um, I'll take a peek down in here. I can see a lot of, a lot of greenery that's knocked down that um, obviously caused by deer traveling through. So, so instead, of trekking to nowhere because of the fact the road has ended. See, I'm kind of hiking a zigzag pattern. Just trying to see if I could find roadbed again. I'd say, oh well, I'll find a nice deadfall somewhere, take a seat, maybe fix myself a cup of coffee, but I'll tell you what, I wasn't kidding when I said if I stop, the skeeters go nuts. They're, they don't bother me much as long as I'm hiking, I keep moving. Whew. Well, at this point, I just Working my way north by northwest. Oh, 
before I encounter the road again. Okay, folks, yeah, I'm on my way out and I worked my way back now. I think you'll remember I had pointed out this flat rock over here. Get my camera kind of adjusted a bit. Pointed out this flat rock over here and, and adjacent to it was another boulder. And I said that those were landmarks that I keep my eyes open for. I come down the road here and there they are. And there's that little pine that was laying across the road that I walked around. So familiar landmarks, they help get you out. This spot is maybe, oh, maybe an hour from the truck so so yeah all is good we're making good time I did do a little side exploring back there didn't run the camera at all but I just I hiked into a little meadow and kind of just took a break small break I'm probably gonna take another one up here in a minute um, I couldn't believe it. It's not often I got to use bug spray. Now, my first camp to Black Lake, we had to use bug spray there because the flies were so bad. It wasn't the skeeters, it was the flies. Well, now it's the other way around. No flies. But boy, the Skeeters, they're terrible. They're terrible. And um, they're, they're fine as long as you keep moving. Boy, the minute you stop, you stop for more than 30, 40 seconds and they're on you and they're chewing you up. Chewing you up. Nice shelf mushrooms right there. There's an old one down here at the bottom. It's all breaking up. It's See now if it was solid and dry, that's a great fire starting fungus. Yeah. That's a fire fungus. Yeah. These spots, oh, up and down, all around. Step over, step under. There was one thing about this trip, this hiking trip, a lot of over and under stuff. And a lot of go around stuff too. So, I figured when I turned around and started heading back, I figured I was probably in 
oh about two and three quarter three mile um, so just say two and a half hours 11 12 1 yeah two and two and a half two to two and a half hours in and Son of a bitch! Oh, Jesus H. Christ. Now that doesn't happen often, but when it does, it pisses you off. I mean, Jesus. Jesus, Mary, Mother, and Joseph. Now, I get to explain that one to you. One little stinking, one little stinking branch over here cut in my stinking shoelace of my hiking boots. And I mean, it ripped the foot right off from underneath me. But nice enough, this is all soft, gooey ground here. It's not really wet, but it's soft. And I just tucked and rolled. But boy, does that piss you off. Yeah, you're just moseying along. And there you go, something will snag you up. But yeah, that's one of those, oh, ain't that embarrassing? Because it wouldn't hurt you. It didn't hurt me. It just pee me off. One little tiny stick. My shoelace. And it was uh, enough to yank my left foot right out from under me. Sent me totally off balance. But that's what you get when you're hiking some of this back brush crap when you're having to bush crap or bushwhack a lot that happens if you're not willing to take a fall once in a while the thing is is <coughs> if you've done this enough you learn how to fall I'll tell you what in fact that's something a person I've always said should practice falling down. Do it out in your backyard or something. <laughs> Do it where someone can't be a audience. <coughs> <coughs> Just go out and you know you'll have to fake it to a degree but go out and intentionally trip and fall. It um, gives you experience. And learn how to fall without getting injured. I've had people say, oh, you should absolutely never fall down when you're out packing. And, oh, boy. Oh, ball. I love it when someone tries to tell an old man like me that you should never fall down. Love it when someone has, has something like that to say. I've actually gone so far as to tell people you should never say something stupid because that could get you to that, that could put you in a position where you're going to fall down or maybe knock down. There we go. Oh, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm sitting back. Nice rock here, moss covered rock. It's a little shady here. 
I'm just kicking back. Oh, I can't be too terribly far. I figure probably about a mile and a half, mile and a quarter. I heard a vehicle go by out on that gravel road where I'm parked. So we're getting close enough that I can hear far off distant vehicles. When I got to my turnaround point, you couldn't hear a thing back there, except the wind in the trees and an occasional bird. I did have a squirrel chirping at me. Otherwise, you don't hear nothing back there. Far enough from the roads that there's no, you don't hear no human sounds at all. Now, I, like I said, when I got down to the end, where the road just, the roadbed disappeared, totally. I couldn't find any sign of it. And what I did was, I started, I kept heading east, the direction of the road. The road heads east by south a little. Um, but I kept following the that direction, that bearing, and started zigzagging, trying to find any remnants of the road at all. And I must have gone another quarter mile, half mile, zigzagging. No sign of it, no sign of it. The road is gone. Deteriorated beyond recognition. I mean, you couldn't even tell by the trees anymore um, where the original road was. So that end of the road is literally gone. I would not venture any farther from where I had gotten without having a basic map and my compass. Well, I do have a compass with me. I always have a compass. I don't know if you can see that or not, but yeah, I always have a compass. Um, in fact, it came in handy today. After doing all that zigzagging, I turned around, decided, well, I'm going to head on out, head back to the truck, just take my sweet time and enjoy it. And I got curious and I wandered off into this one meadow that was off to the right of me and I, I knew well I'm heading, heading generally north now and I got to that meadow and I saw a little pond beyond it and I thought I'm going to take a look see if that's an actual creek running through there what so I walked into that and the thing was I had to really bushwhack to get in just to that clearing little clearing and that meadow well, when I got to the pond, you couldn't even see the meadow from where the pond was. So I thought, well, I'll just head. I'll take a left and head. That should take me west. Well, it did, but it took me a while to realize I hadn't checked my compass. And because I hadn't checked my compass, I had veered, I had veered off to the north. Well, so I turned and I thought, well, okay, I just need to take a bit of a, another left. And it'll take me west and I'll cross the road. I'll, I'll run into the road. Well, again, I should have looked at the compass more than once every 20 minutes and realized I don't think I'm going west enough. Pulled out the compass and no, I had veered again towards the north. So 
I was frustrated. I'm like, doggone it. If I don't get myself back west into that road, I'm going to be hiking through these thick woods all the way up to the gravel road, and then I'll probably have a mile hike down the gravel road or so to get to my truck. So I, looking at the compass, I'm going, yep, there's due west. I'm going to head due west by southwest. And that'll intersect me with the road. I didn't walk, I'm not kidding, I did not walk more than 50 feet from where I thought, doggone it, I'm totally, totally off course. I don't know how far I am from that road. Literally within 50 feet, I walk over and there's the road. So if I would have used the compass in the first place, I would have walked maybe 50 feet and been on the road. But here all that time, I was kind of zigzagging west by north and I was paralleling the road bed and bushwhacking all that time when I could have just headed due west, maybe a little southwest, and I would have run right into the road bed and it would have been so much easier hiking. But yeah, don't ever, you know, the more you're out here, the more you do these things, you look at the sun and you know the weather pattern, what direction are the clouds moving, and you're going, yeah, I know where I'm going. But that's not exact. It's not exact. So don't ever, don't ever hesitate to use your compass. Well, that's it, guys. I'm going to shut the camera down, and then I'm going to hike on out to the truck, and I'll say goodbye when I get out there. Unless I run into something between here and there interesting. So, I'll see you down the trail. Well, guys. Yeah, there we are. We're out at the truck. Trying to get. I'll tell you what. I caught my beard in more branches today than I have in, a, in all of the last three months. <laughs> a lot of bushwhacking today. I mean, it literally busted off of beard hairs. Um, hope the wind isn't messing this up too much. But as you can probably tell, it's pretty sunny. It's bright, bright, bright. Wasn't back there. Woo! Back in there? Shady constantly. I did change into a t-shirt halfway through the trip halfway through the hike. It was a good hike. It was a long hike. It was worth it. It was worth it. it nothing extraordinary or extra exciting. Just a very, very pleasant day out in the woods. Very pleasant day out in the woods. I fell down once. No biggie. So what? You're gonna fall down once in a while. The mosquitoes are all well fed. I fed the mosquitoes and otherwise that's it I enjoyed every minute of my hike I took two breaks on my hike it was fun it was fun I'm glad do I I'm glad I got that hike in I haven't been able to do a lot of hiking this year yet um, and the year's summer's coming to a close hey if you're new to the channel subscribe ring the bell you'll know when I'm doing a video when a video is posting or when I'm doing a live stream great to have those notifications you know and hey if you enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up hit that like button leave a comment love your comments and until the next outing hey you all have a very very nice day bye bye